Welcome to the restoration of my $7,000 mansion. Today we are going to be working on the main floor of the house in this room, which is going to be the future kitchen. We have these temporary walls holding up the center of the room because right now this big beam has these floor joists that are going into it. And none of those floor joists are attached to the big beam. So we need to attach floor joists to big beam. And then task number two. See these boards that are laid down on the floor? Well, they were no good anymore because this is where the old bathroom used to be and they're all notched out they're bowed out so we're going to be pulling these out and we're going to be replacing them with brand spanking new ones and not only do we have floor joists up here that we need to replace we have floor joists on the other side of this temporary wall over here where the old chimney used to be there is nothing holding them up so we have two over here that we're going to replace as well so that's task number three then task number four will be to pull out these temporary walls in the kitchen then the kitchen will be completely framed and then if we have a really really good day we will have a task number five over here where the old staircase used to be. We currently have no wall. We just have a temporary wall. We need to build a new permanent wall right here. Then we'd be able to get rid of this temporary wall. So if we have a really, really good day, we will get to this task number five. But we got to focus on these first four over here in the kitchen first. We're already not off to the most productive start of the day when it comes to working in the house because I have some office work that I need to do. So welcome to my office. Okay, Roman, good luck in the house. I'll be back in a little while. I apologize for not taking you with me, taking these boards down, but it was one minute task with my board knocker 2000. I just simply grabbed a piece of two by four and knocked them down. There is only one good board that we could reuse. I guess might as well put everything new. I hope it reaches the bottom, the floor, so they don't fall down like madman. We got the boards brought in. Let's double check the measurement so we can start cutting them and making the notch that we need to put on that side. 111. We have our boards measured out, cut to a length, all six of them. Now the next step is to cut a little notch. So I don't know why it was done in this manner here, but you can see how this joist is notched out. This is, see this is the top of the board and it, it has about an inch long notch. So we need to do the same thing on the new boards. Not bad, not bad. Only took us an hour and a half. Now let's go help Roman. Roman already got the floor joist that used to be underneath the old bathroom, already measured out, cut, and took out the old ones and replaced them with the new ones. So now we are ready to start setting 
the hangers on all these floor joists along this big old beam. Putting these hangers up on these floor joists is pretty simple. We're simply just gonna set it up right there. We're gonna make sure the bottom is flush up tight. Grab my hammer. We're gonna smack the top. It's got a little clip. Okay, now we are ready to put in some nails. So we got some nails over here in this pouch with our pliers. I like to put it inside the pliers, so that way I do not smash my finger. These nails are not very long, so it's easy to accidentally get your finger caught up in there. So we'll do this. One down, two to go on this side, then we go three on this side, then we move over to the next. We're gonna try to get some longer nails for these ones that toenail it in, so we're not gonna do those ones right now. We will come back once we get everything hung up just like that. All we got left with these boards is screwing them on that side, which should be a pretty quick process. And then we'll have to put in 30 hangers or more. I think 30, 35. Easy. are the two floor joists that we need to take out and put the new ones in but surprise we have a little temporary wall that we installed in the way so we need to jack it up so there is no pressure up above it and then do the rest <laughs> Joist hangers are now up on the ceiling, so it is time to pull out these temporary walls, and then we are going to be done framing the inside of the kitchen.
Just take a look at that. We now have a framed in kitchen. This whole space is gonna be the kitchen. We have this big header board going across, so kitchen, and then is going to be open into the dining room. This is a temporary wall. We are gonna have another header board just like this one, built somewhere over there, kind of right off the end of that one, going that way, right, basically right between those windows is where that one's going to be going. But now that we have this all done, Header board's all completed, got all the floor joists hanging off of it. Roman got the new ones added in right there. Got the new ones added in right here that actually go all the way to sitting on top of the wall. We have the kitchen completely framed up. The kitchen's about 40% bigger than it used to be when it was the original design of the house. There used to be a little pantry type play area when dad was a little boy and then it got turned into a bathroom and then there used to be a little walkway that would go up to this door that would lead to the front porch of the house. But we pulled all that out, took out the hutch that used to be right here and this used to be walled off so you could not see into that side of the house at all. We got this all opened up now. It makes a much, much more usable space in the house than what used to be here. There used to be a room back there in the far right, room in the back far left, room right here. There was a room over here, and then there was a wall that separated right between here that would take us over into the stairway. We had pocket doors that would close there. There was another door back there in that little room. So there was a whole bunch of just little individual compartmentalized areas. We lived here for a couple years, and we realized that when everything was compartmentalized off, you just flat out would not use some of the rooms. So we wanted to get everything opened up. That way we'd have bigger rooms, but more importantly than having a bigger room, we wanted to have rooms that we would actually use. So by opening them up, making them into usable spaces, that was the goal of us getting everything opened up through here. And honestly, I really like how this looks. We have nine and a half foot ceilings to the bottom of those header boards. So we got plenty of ceiling space. We are going to be taking out this door at some point. This is all going to be kitchen cabinets, countertops, all along these walls, all the way at least over to there. I don't know if we're gonna go from there to here yet, but we can if we want to. We can have an island in the center, then we can have a dining room table over here. We're gonna be taking that door and we are going to be moving it to where this window is. So this big window is going to be coming out. We're gonna have a nice big door right there. So that'll be center of the house. When we're looking at it from the road, we'll have a, a beautiful bit of symmetry going on in the house, because right now, it's over on the side. So that's gonna be neat. It's gonna be a little bit of surgery opening this up, but we have a, a lot of really cool plans coming through here, but look at that. That is a lot of work, but wow, that looks good. We are done with construction in the kitchen now, but we do have a couple little touch up pieces like this exterior wall. These studs have a little notch cut out for this exterior floor joist. For whatever reason, that floor joist has pulled away from the wall a little bit over the years. So I got some 5 16 inch T30 screws that are three inches long. I'm gonna run this right through that floor joist and we're gonna suck that floor joist back into the little groove that is supposed to bear all the weight of that exterior floor joist. <laughs> a little bit of looking around. We got all the joist hangers up in the kitchen, but we have some on this side of the big header board that need to be hung up yet. Would you like to race? Challenge accepted. So here's what the challenge consists of. We have to get the joist hanger up. We have three screws on this side. We have three screws on this side. Everything needs to be tight to the joist, both on the sides as well as the bottom. And once we have all the nails in, then we have two screws on either side. Whoever does it the fastest wins. Eat that, Roman! Woo! 
darn it, I screwed myself up again. Now that we got all these done, Roman, I'm just double checking to make sure there's none that need shimmed up. I might climb and look at that one, but are we ready to build the wall over there now? You tell me. Do you want to build a wall? Do you want to build a snowman? We have a problem. The house sits on a block wall foundation, so we cannot move this block wall. That height that it is set at is where it is set at. Inside of the wall, it sits right on top of the block, so it's sitting on the plate. Now, if we come over here to where we are building the new wall, Roman took a two by four block and put a string line on top of it on this side, and then he went over to the other side and he did the exact same thing. So we have a string line tight on this side as well, but check this out. When we take a two by four block in the center of the room, remember, it's touching on that side and it's touching over on that side, we have about a half an inch gap up the top of the block, so we can move the string down a lot. So that means center of our floor, there's big beam running right under here. This is half an inch lower than the exterior block walls of the house. So we have a big bow right in the middle of the floor because our supporting wall is lower than the outside. So why is this a problem? Well, we have a couple of reasons. Just to give a little visual on how things are gonna lay out, our low spot is right there in the center of that wall. So this is going to be the pantry. We have the kitchen down here, which we already have all the header boards made in here. We have the entrance right at the top of the stairs where we walk in. Dining room will be in the middle. Living room will be at the back. Staircase to go upstairs will be right there. Then we'll have pantry and bathroom. So we're gonna have some walls built through here. Walls that are currently not here right now. Problem number one, since the beam and wall below us has a low spot right here, it has made a divot in the floor. When we have a divot in the floor and we build a wall on top of that, it does not work because if we ever want to address this low spot in the floor and we lift up on the floor while we have a wall already built, it is simply just going to transfer this board higher, which pushes the floor upstairs higher, which pushes the attic higher. So it just makes more problems up above us. So we need to get down here fixed first so that way we can do everything else because we don't want to make more problems throughout the house. So that's problem number one. Problem number two with having a big old divot in the middle of the floor, we can see it. Like literally I can sit right here and I can see it. We've done an incredible amount of work already on all the floor joists on this entire main floor, replaced every single one of them, as well as all of the subflooring, and we've glued and screwed everything. So we've gone through an, a ton of work already and I can see we still have a visible problem. So to me, that's a problem. And if we look close, it's not the whole floor. It's basically from the seam right in front of me to the base of the ladder. If you look at that seam on the floor, you can see where it starts to bow down right there. That is right where we need to build that wall. On the other side of the ladder, there is also another spot, basically right from that seam in the board over to that seam. There's another dip right there. So luckily for us, it's not the entire floor that has a problem. It's just those two problem areas. But the reason why we didn't notice we had those problems in the first place is because, well, we thought our boards in the basement were straight. I'll show you what I mean. Our problem area arises right in the center of this doorway to about right there. So from there to there, we have the bow down spots. And then over here in the back room, right there in that opening is where we have the other bowed spot. Looking at this, when we were originally doing everything, we should have probably ran a laser over it to see what we were working with. But we have a block wall with a footing underneath of it. And then on top of that block wall, we have the big old beam. So we just assumed we have nice block wall, nothing's all cracked out. We're probably good to go, but not the case. If we climb our ladder, and I just stuck my head right into that nail, that hurt, ow. But if we look down, we can see right there in the center. Look at that, it is not straight. We actually have quite a bit of movement in that beam somehow, even though it's sitting on top of this big old wall. And then turning the other direction, we basically have the exact same thing going on 
right down there. So this is a case of where we looked at it and 70% of that is straight and we are on the correct plane going from one side of the house to the other. We have the same plane of floor, but those two troublesome areas are what is giving us fits. So we basically have two options. Option number one is we can take little shims and we can shove them between the floor joists and this big beam and we can prop up those troublesome areas that are sinking down. So that way they're propped up, everything's on the same plane on the main floor. Trouble with that is this area has already sagged over the years, so what is going to stop that board from continually bowing down other than if we completely block off this area and put in a big floor jack? Honestly, probably would not be a very bad idea to do that. It wouldn't cost a terrible amount to get a floor jack in here to hold this up. It's not like we're coming walking through here all the time anyway, so really not the end of the world. Doesn't look the best, yes, but I mean, it's the basement. This is gonna be a utility room. However, this wall behind me, if we look at it close, it is leaning. Now, we don't know, did they build it like that where it was leaning? You know, did they have the new guy building this wall down here in the basement? Or has this started to settle over time and is moving? I don't know, but once again, is that really that much of a problem? It's been here for a hundred years. Probably not. So if solution number one is gonna work just fine, what in the world would solution number two be? Well, that is the nuclear option of literally ripping down this entire wall and pouring a new footer underneath of it, pouring a new concrete wall that sticks up above the footer and building a wall on top of it, which is actually what we're gonna end up doing solely because we are already going to be tearing out the rest of the concrete in the basement. So that way we can put water mitigation systems in under the floor and in drains. So we're gonna have the rest of this tore up anyway, so we are literally going to be working right there. We have a ton of time, energy, and investment already in the upstairs, and there's going to be more. So we just wanna make sure that we have everything built down here correctly. And if we already have this tore up, we're basically out two days of labor, four yards of concrete, and whatever time we have to pay Roman to sit and watch the concrete dry and then we actually know it is 100% done right and we will be able to get our floor fixed. So we are gonna have a bit of a time with sledgehammers, concrete demolition saw, jackhammer. We just turned a little job into a big job real quick. We got all the joist hangers hung in the kitchen. Kitchen is now fully framed up. We are done with any sort of framing in the kitchen whatsoever. We got all the floor joist hangers up here into the dining room. We would, I'm gonna call it a really, really good day because we would have had this wall built had we not noticed the problems in the floor, but we opened up a whole new can of worms downstairs in the basement. So with that being said, we're tired. This is all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.